Hi, this is Voice of the Whirlwind by Walter John Williams. Chapter 1 Steward hung suspended beneath the sky, the color of wet slate. Below him the ground was dark, indistinct. There was the sensation of movement, of gliding flight. Sometimes Steward's stomach fluttered as he dipped closer to the dark opacity beneath him. He could feel his nerves dancing, his own readiness building. The sky tipped and spun. On the horizon there was flame, a ripple of deep pulsing red, throbbing like an artery laid bare by shrapnel, shrouded in a drifting black cloak. Not the sun, Steward realized, something burning. He was never afraid or surprised when he came awake from the dream. He woke refreshed, his limbs ready to move, dance, fight. He knew that whatever it was he was drifting toward in that cold gray sky, it was something he wanted. Dr. Ashraf had a corner office high in the hospital complex, invaded on two sides by bright Arizona sky. Eddie N. Najagi Stewart could sit on a padded couch and gaze through glass walls across Flagstaff to the mountains. Three peaks cut into fragments by rows of mirror glass condecologies that reflected the rising land, the sky, the hospital, the shimmering line of bright alloy highway that cut through the towers. The mirrored buildings reflected reality, distorted it, multiplied it, made it interesting. The room was perfectly soundproofed. Even the bullet railway below the hospital failed to do more than create a minor vibration in the room's glass wall. Steward could watch the world in the mirrors, but he was insulated from it, heard only Ashraf's emotionless voice, the whisper of the air conditioning, the distant vibration of the bullet train. He wondered whom Ashraf wanted him to be. Ashraf sat behind Stewart at a desk. There were readouts on Ashraf's side of the desk, Stewart knew, connected to monitors in the couch, voice stress analyzers, pulse and respiration indicators, maybe even sensors for analyzing perspiration and muscle tension. He hadn't seen them, but sometimes when he turned to face Ashraf, he saw the reflection of red LEDs in the doctor's eyes. Stewart had been taught how to defeat such machines. He remembered long hours spent under deep hypnosis, drugs, biofeedback mechanisms. He couldn't think of any real reason to use his skills, so for the most part he didn't. He used them only when he talked about Natalie. This, he told himself, was more to keep himself calm than to fool Ashraf. Once he told Ashraf about his dream, Maybe it's a memory of Sheol, he said, a parafoil assault or something. You know that's impossible, said Dr. Ashraf. Sometimes it seemed to Stewart that he had as many personalities as there were reflections of the world in the Condicos, that he was trying on personalities like masks in a store, one after the other, just to see if any of them fit. It was clear that the person who dreamed was unacceptable to Dr. Ashraf. Stewart never mentioned the dream again.